Hey guys, it's a crow with no name and welcome to the audiobook channel. Um, to answer a common question, when is the audiobook coming out? I don't quite know yet. It depends on funding. That's why I'm trying to make all these little videos in the time being, uh, both to drum up some excitement for the channel, get some people in here, and also hopefully to contribute to watch times so that way we can actually be monetized because YouTube does not automatically monetize any of your side channels. You'd think they would. You'd think I'd already established myself as a quality creator, but apparently not, so. Now, for funsies, I was going to rank all of my characters based off of how evil they are. Maybe like a tier rank list, but I overthink everything, as you know, and it did get kind of complicated. I mean, not with Simone. Simone's a monster, so that, that was easy. But where do you rank characters like... Elijah, who do bad things, but at least have the common decency to hate themselves after. And what about Aretti? Like, she was raised by a corporate demon and a serial killer. Does that excuse her to a degree? Because let's just be fair here, how else was she supposed to turn out? And then are there conditions? Like, are Elijah's murders worse than Simone's murders? Because she kills bad people, usually. Then Elijah, again, the true headache of this ranking system. He's killed a lot of people, but he's also saved a lot of people, too. So does that make him, like, karmically neutral? Do good deeds and bad deeds, like, cancel each other out? You know, there were just too many questions that were a little too deep for this video. And I did not feel like answering them even on one of those days, so. So in order to keep things from becoming too subjective, I will be judging all of my characters as either completely good or completely evil based off of one thing only. Which route would they choose in Stardew Valley? Junimos or Joja? You see, my argument is that no one who would help the Junimos restore the community center could possibly be completely bad. Like, how could somebody help those cute little fairies and be evil? But also, Anyone who betrays them and goes Joja could not possibly have a single glimmer of humanity left in their decaying soul. Nothing they did in the books, published or in progress, which was another thing that made it too complicated to judge on a tier list, you know, because I know some things about Elijah, for example, that no one else knows. So yeah, nothing they did in the books, published or in process, matters anymore. All that matters is will they help the Junimos or will they sell out to Joja? We will start with fan favorite, Eredi Constantino. I'm currently still playtesting the mod for her, by the way, uh, but I do plan on uploading her to Nexus with the start of the audiobook. I, I think they'll both be ready at around the same time because I've been working on them pretty much neck and neck. So by the time the audiobook is ready to publish, surely, surely her mod will be done enough to where I can just post it. Anyway, Eredi, as I'm sure you probably noticed if you've read the book so far, she doesn't really have a whole lot of empathy for humans. There, there are a couple of humans she likes, but just in general, she doesn't feel too deeply for them. As long as you don't ruin her engagement party, Elisha, she doesn't really care who lives or dies. But animals? Not on her watch. She has a very soft spot in her heart for animals, and that is exactly why she is a vegetarian. Now you may say, but sad crow man, I see where this is going. The Junimos aren't animals. They're more like fairies or something. But if she cried because her father wanted to kill some spider, which by the way, they were living in Australia, so it was probably him or the spider. Like, if she, that's all she cares about, some ugly spider. Imagine how she would feel about the Junimos. They're, they're these cute little fairy apple things. And I just don't think she would have it in her heart to betray them. And since she does have an anxiety disorder, I do think she'd enjoy the cozy gaming world of Sardu Valley quite a bit. But let's just be honest here. Her priority would probably be flirting with Sebastian. But I'm sure she'd get the community center done by year four to six, somewhere around there at least. So there you go. Eredi Constantino is officially good. Stop rolling your eyes, William. Nobody cares. She passed the Junimo test. That is irrefutable. That's all we need. Next is my personal favorite, Elijah Walker. Yes, he has thinned out the human population a little bit, but all that matters now 
is how he would treat the Junimos. As some of you already know, I've actually been role-playing as him sort of while playtesting already. I'm on year two right now, and Elijah is currently working on his winery. And he actually has a pretty good selection on Daddy Issues Farm. He built a little house for his stray person, William. And there's a little fire pit to keep her ready warm when she reads. But did he sell out to Joja? No. Hooray! He even pays the Junimos in diamonds. Talk about a solid redemption arc. We did it, guys. We changed him. Unfortunately, I added some pre-marriage dialogue to Ready, and I have to test it all to make sure it works. So the only reward Elijah is getting for turning his life around is me ruining his marriage so I can playtest his spouse so other people can marry her. Enjoy it while it lasts, good guy Elijah. Now next is Simone Constantino, the main character of the prequel, which I am writing right now, and Aretti's mother. Simone is a proper strategist through and through. She would realize very quickly that playing the game, I suppose, as intended with the community center has the best rewards. Especially, you know, since you have to use gold to buy the bus anyway, but you actually get items that are very useful to gameplay when you unlock the bus and you know, all the other bundles. Because you actually get items from unlocking the bundles, whereas when you go to Morris, you just sign away your soul and that's it. Now, I think Simone would easily be able to complete all the bundles by year one, except for the red cabbage. I mean, she does seem like the kind of person who's organized enough to finish it by year one. I think there's a button now for the red cabbage to appear in, like, the traveling cart or something like guaranteed by the end of year one. However, I feel like she'd actually spend most of year one just becoming obnoxiously rich and building this sprinkler empire. When year two starts, that's when she'd start taking the community center seriously. She would save the fish tank bundle for last because the glittering boulder just kind of sucks. There's like no point in panning. It just takes up an inventory slot. That's about it. Well, you know, the Junos, they don't care what order you do it in. They'd be so happy following her around, jumping her around, she completes the bundles, that sort of thing. And then she collects the final fish, and she will take that fish to the community center, hold it high above her head, and announce to the Junos that she has the key to save them all. <laughs> then she runs off to Jojo Mart and buys a membership. And then, just for fun, she'd go harass the hat mouse with a slingshot. Kill anyone you want, Simone, but betray the Junimos? Unforgivable. Simone is certified evil. Next is William, the narrator of Eretti and Elijah's story. William is probably one of the most loved characters after Eretti, probably just because he's actually a good guy. I mean, Pretty much every bad thing he does in the story is some kind of defense mechanism. Whether it's an unsavory opinion or just going along with something that's absolutely terrible that he should not be involved in, it's all some kind of a defense mechanism. But William is so tired of everybody acting like he's so good, so sweet. A pure, all-loving marshmallow harvested from the asshole of the purest unicorn. He wants to know what it feels like to do something bad. So he walks into Joja Mart. And then he runs away because the vibe is off. I don't think we need to waste too much time on William. We all know he's a good boy. He could never. He could never. I mean, yeah, you could argue, but isn't William a little easy to manipulate? But Morris... He's a little more obviously evil than Aretti and Elijah, but we all know that they're good anyway. But you see Morris, he, he's wearing this big spooky tailcoat, he's harassing everyone, he's going into Pierre's place of business and offering everyone coupons to go to Joja instead, clearing everyone out. And he's not a thirst trap at all. So there you have it guys, William is good. I wish there was more room for me to like show off this shirt. I spent a lot of time on it, but like I'm so close in the frame, you can't even see it. But this isn't comfortable. This just isn't a comfortable way for me to sit just to advertise a shirt. I'm such a bad YouTuber. <laughs> okay, anyway. Next is Whitney. Now Whitney's not really that important in book one, I admit, but she is a nurse, mainly because it just feels kind of like the right thing for her to do. Her family has a lot of generational wealth behind it. She doesn't really have to worry too much about what she does for a living. And because of that, I would say 
that if she's a nurse, it's because she wants to be a nurse. It's not for, it's not for the money. There are a lot of other things she could be doing if it was for the money. So while part of it may just be because her mother's side came from a long line of nurses and she already knows a lot about it, and that makes it kind of easy for her because, you know, it's not a completely foreign thing. It's pretty clear that Whitney does to an extent care about helping others, at least if she likes them, because of how she treats William when he breaks his arm. Really good with the bedside manner. As for how much of it is an act, that's up for the reader to determine. Considering she's also the type of person who will beat your ass if you piss her off. But which would she choose? The Junimos or Joja? It's not as obvious with her as the others, but I do think she'd go the community center route. Because Whitney does, to an extent, follow expectations. Yeah, she had her alt phase as a teenager that she's toned down now as an adult. But, you know, as an adult, she just kind of tries to follow more of an expected script in life. And the game does kind of expect you to go the community center route. Not to mention, and this doesn't come up in the first book because she's physically hiding it from William, but she is interested in witchcraft, so in nature, etc., etc. So I think the community center route would just feel right for her. I don't think it'd be like a big moralistic decision for her. It would just make sense. But the rules were clear from the beginning. We're judging based off of the route they choose, not why they choose the route they choose. Therefore, Whitney is good. I never thought I'd say this, but we're kind of running out of room in the good pile because my characters are all such good people. Now, next we have Yorios Constantino, CEO of Constantino Enterprises. He's an easy one anyway. He's the whole reason already has a net worth of $290 billion. His whole shtick is that he buys out all these dying businesses and then rebrands them as a Constantino Enterprises subsidiary. He does not care about morals. He would physically waltz into the community center and stab a Junimo to death if it made gold fall out. And like the whole time he's playing the game, he would fantasize that he owns Joja Mart, which would make sense because, you know, the family branding is blue and white. Joja Mart, blue and white. And like, he'd act like the farm is just his hobby, but even just his hobby, he would obsessively min-max. He would be bleeding every single square of his map dry to become a millionaire by the end of year one. Now, sure, you could argue that basically every bad thing that happens in the book can be traced back to him. I mean, a lot of the bad things that happen in book one can be traced back to Simone as well and the mistakes she's made, but more than anything, I'd say it traces back to Georgie. But none of that's what makes him evil. What makes him evil is that he would go Georgia. And next will be Antonis Constantino, his brother. I don't really have much to say about Antonis that I haven't already said about Yorios. He may act like he's nicer and more approachable than his brother. Haha, <laughs> he tells funny jokes. But nah, he's just as bad. Maybe even worse, as a matter of fact. Like, this man has no loyalties. This man does not care about family, hardly. Really, all he cares about is money, power, and ownership. And also a sibling rivalry with his brother, but we don't see much of that in book one. So anyway. Yeah, so, uh, Antonis, also evil. Another one of those Joja traitors. All right, next is evil Queen Tonya, Antonis' daughter and therefore Eredi's cousin. I personally call her evil Queen Tonya kind of as a joke. Now, in the original draft that's public, you don't really get to see much of Tonya until book three, but since the audiobook is an extended edition and it will contain some scenes from the prequel series to flesh it out more so that way the series can finally have an ending and I can just get rid of that awful cliffhanger and everyone can have how the story ends and it will make sense, but... God, where was I going with, with all that again? Uh, oh yeah, you'll get more context for why Tonya is the way she is, why she hates Aredi, and all that stuff. But for now, all I can really tell you is that she is a malignant narcissist. And that is why I call her Evil Queen Tonya. It's not so much because I like her. I actually, I think she's probably one of my more despicable, completely unlikable characters but I do insist she be called by her full title, Evil Queen Tonya. As a malignant narcissist, all she really cares about is herself and looking good. 
She intensely wants admiration, but she that's not good enough for her. She wants to be admired, and she also wants everyone else around her to hate themselves because she's so pretty and perfect compared to them. Thus, it makes perfect sense that she would restore the community center. You restore Jojo, you get a little ceremony, and that's nice. You restore the community center, you get a trophy. And that trophy tells everybody that you are the best. She is not gonna pass up that trophy. Like, what would you rather have? A little scene where this creepy guy in a tail suit talks about how great you are and drags out all these poor, pitiable truck workers in Jojo uniforms that have to stare at you and pretend they like you, or the full admiration of the whole town for fixing the community center. So there you have it. Evil Queen Tonya is good. It makes a lot of sense. Now next is Tansy Papadopoulou, Elisha's mother who went missing in 2008. I honestly can't really even imagine her playing the game, but I could see her like assuming Jojomar is better just because it's bigger and fancier or whatever the Pierre's is. And she'd be getting a membership thinking that it would lower the seed prices, seeing as how like, you know, the lore of the story does say Jojo Mart is cheaper. I mean, the game does pretty much state it, so fair enough. But anyway, when she finds out that's not how it works, she would get super mad. Like, huge Karen level fit. She will never set foot into a Jojo Mart again. She would be like on the border of calling up Concerned Ape and like chewing him out, but I think she'd settle for like just leaving a really nasty one star review because uh, early on in her farm day, she spent like all of her money on a Jojo Mart membership and didn't even get anything out of it. Anyway, despite vowing to never return to Jojo Mart again, she does go there to get sunflower seeds and whenever she's just kind of in the neighborhood. So Tansy is out of touch and also evil. And lastly, we have Eredi's other cousin, Evil Queen Tonya's brother, Mikhail. Mikhail Constantino is not really an important character in book one, but I developed him anyway because I don't value my time and I have nothing better to do. Apparently, anyway. Now, Mikhail is the bassist and lyricist for an up-and-coming alternative rock band. Hello, Butsby. Coming down? Hello, would you Butsby? Do you want to say hello to the camera, Butsby? Butsby! Hello, Butsby! Little Butsby says hello, everyone! Hello, everyone! Please rate, subscribe, and blessed be, motherfuckers! He's like, put me down! Put me down! So he's in an up-and-coming alternative rock band, and he just thinks he's too good for the family business while directly benefiting from his family's wealth. But he's so down to earth, guys. He shops at the mall among commoners. His hoodie came from Hot Topic. Mikhail is just like us. He doesn't even wear his Rolex that often. And I think he would like 100% boycott Joja. Like he would start this whole Twitch stream where he like cancels Jojo Mart and acts like he's the big anti-capitalist hero. That leaves the Junimos. Though honestly, I don't think he is the type of guy who would uh, sell out to Joja anyway. You know, just because the Junimos are so cute and you know, while he is tone deaf quite a bit and out of touch with reality, you know, being the heir of a fortune and a huge company and all that. He's at least a decent guy, especially compared to the rest of his family. He does have a very dark sense of humor, though. I think he would absolutely also be dating every single bachelor and bachelorette in the game at once. However, that does not count against him. We already decided the criteria. Junimo's good. Joja bad. He would help the Junimos and is therefore good. Well, there you have it. My character's ranked by either good or evil. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say other than, of course, obviously, please rate, subscribe, and blessed be motherfuckers. If you want early videos, please check out my Patreon.